Welcome in guys. Today I'm going to be showing you my favorite tips and tricks for the game Days Gone. I have 100%ed this game in the hardest difficulty on Survival Plus Plus, and I'd like to share some insights with you on what I found along the way. It's really important to switch shoulders so that you're not overexposing your body. You just want your gun and your eye that is looking down your sights seeing the opponent. So if I'm coming around here and there's like a little bit of a corner, I want my left eye as well as a little bit of the rifle showing around the rock. If I switch shoulders and then come out this way, look how much more of my body is showing. My entire chest, head, both of my arms, my entire rifle, everything is showing. So you always, always, always want to peek over the correct shoulder. So you're showing the least amount of yourself as possible. Boom, boom. Anytime you're going back to base and you need to refill your ammo, it is so crucial to refill your ammo from the back of your bike. You see the little ammo can on the bottom of my bike with the space bar? If I hold this, I will refill 100% of my ammo to capacity. If I buy the ammo individually from the merchant, I'm going to spend $1,350 to fill up my sniper, $400 to fill up my assault rifle, and $432 to fill up my revolver. Now, in order to purchase a saddlebag worth of ammo, it costs $400. So just this little simple trick of Come on. filling up from your bike, going to your bike, holding space bar, plus 36 revolver, plus 27 sniper, plus 200 assault rifle. Go back to the merchant, shit. This is some primo shit. buy a saddlebag worth of ammo, $400. Too easy. If you don't have any ammo surplus in the back of your bike, go to the merchant, buy a saddlebag for $400, go to your bike, refill your ammo, go back to the merchant, buy more saddlebags. Because when you're out in the field, you're going to want to reload. Every time you go to base, you always want to tune up your bike. So you're going to go to this guy and you are going to spend the money. Money is really not an issue later in the game. Scrap is very annoying to get out into the field because you need to um, open up hoods of cars in order to obtain scrap and you don't get scrap all the time. Sometimes you get a lot of scrap, sometimes a little bit. It's just really annoying. You always want to keep an inventory of scrap because your bike could break out in the field and you don't have... Um, you know, a mechanic nearby, a base nearby to do this. Same goes for fuel. Anytime you're driving through the world, you're always going to find fuel cans and you're always going to take those fuel cans and put them inside your bike as often as possible. So if you do go back to the base, you do just want to fill up. Okay. Another thing is upgrading your bike. Upgrade your bike. You use it all the time. You don't want it to be slow. You don't want it to be crappy. You want to be able to drive up and down mountains. You want to have a nitrous boost for hitting like those ramps over broken bridges and stuff. Upgrade your bike. Spend the money. It's worth the investment, especially if you're playing in survival plus plus mode or you're going to in the future. Your bike is everything because there's no fast travel and you need to use your bike to get from everywhere on the map and you can upgrade your bike at the mechanic. Upgrade your skills. When you upgrade your skills, you can increase things like accuracy, stamina, your survival vision range. You can increase meat and plant yield when you do harvest these things. You can reduce your focus vision. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Definitely focus on these. Read them all. See which ones best suit your play style and then go from there. You will not take fall damage and you could jump from pretty high places as long as you are on your motorcycle and you angle your bike in the correct direction. You could also mitigate the amount of damage that your bike takes by angling your bike in the correct direction. If you are on foot and try to do this, you will die. That jump only took 14% of my overall bike's health off. Hordes. Get really comfortable at doing hordes. Try and find a nice safe space where you can uh, rain down bombs on the horde so you can kind of thin out the horde. Put a lot of obstacles that are that are naturally in the terrain between you and the horde so that when you are uh, aggroing portions of the horde, you never want to aggro the entire horde at once, 
when you're aggroing portions of the horde, you're safe and you can bomb them from a distance. As you can see, I choose the bridge here as my choke point because I want to funnel all of these zombies into a narrow section of the map. If you're out in the open field and you aggro a horde, the, na the zombies not only will chase you, but they will fan out. They will spread out as far as possible. So it's more difficult to get those collateral shots. See how I'm taking just little bits of the horde at a time. When you position yourself to fight the horde in the most efficient way possible, you also allow yourself enough distance to crouch and really take your time shooting your semi-automatic rifle one bullet at a time. You don't want to shoot your rifle in full, fully automatic, especially not for a horde, unless they're really swarming you. You want to conserve your ammo. You should definitely be getting comfortable with fighting hordes. Hordes are a lot more manageable and a lot less scary once you know how to actually handle a horde. Keep your head on a swivel. When you are firing shots at a horde, you are going to attract more zombies in the area. So you're going to end up fighting the horde plus additional zombies that are also nearby. Gunshots attract zombies. You also want to be using all three of the guns in your inventory slots simultaneously. One, so you don't have to reload because switching guns is faster than reloading. And two, you never want to be stuck with two guns that are empty and one gun that is full, but it's not appropriate for the situation that you're trying to approach. This will mitigate the amount of times that you need to be refilling your ammo from your bike because that number is finite. You should also be saving the game right before you engage the horde by holding R on your bike. It's so important that when you are taking on hordes, you get vision of the horde before the horde gets vision of you. Get a vantage point, get a high ground, use the terrain to your advantage. Are you smarter than an AI? The zombies are all computer controlled. You need to outsmart them. Stand on top of a mountain, rain down Molotov cocktails. Thin out the horde as much as you possibly can before the majority of them come out and try and attack you. If you do end up biting off more than you can chew, it's very important that you have a jog and you have a sprint. This is me sprinting, right? So you want to jog to save your stamina and then jog to the point where they close the distance. They're about to swing and then roll. Now you can sprint to clear some distance and then you could turn around, take some shots. Make sure you're conserving your sprint because you don't want to go and hit your sprint and you don't have any juice left. But you're just going to sprint, turn around, shoot, roll, jog a little bit. As soon as he's about to hit you, roll. Too easy. Approaching caves. If you're unable to stand on top of the cave where the horde is, you want to stand outside the front of the cave. Make sure you know what's behind you because you're going to be running that way. So I can see that the terrain right here is going downhill. This is going to put me at a disadvantage because once I start running down the hill, the part of the hill right here is covering up some of the collateral shots that I could potentially be getting on the horde that is running towards me. So I want to make sure I know my, where my surroundings are. I have an exit plan. I stand a good distance away from the cave and I'm just going to fire a pop shot. That pop shot should rowl up some of the zombies to get some of them out. If you ever find yourself on fire, run away and roll. The second you roll, the fire will go out. Just like when you're a kid, stop, drop, and roll. Anytime you are set on fire, just roll. You will immediately get put out. Anytime you pick up a melee item, it has a health bar. You can see the 100% here. Every time you take a swing and you hit something, you're going to lower this percentage until the melee weapon ultimately breaks. 
As you can see, my bat has 20% health left. So what you're gonna do is go up on the quick wheel, you're gonna click on it, and now you can upgrade it. So you wanna use it until it's low percentage, and then you're going to upgrade it to whatever you'd like, whatever items that you have. You can see this requires certain materials that I need to collect around the map. Once you upgrade it, you get a full health bar on your melee weapon again. And then not only that, but you're also able to repair it. As you can see, 100%. It went from 20% to 100% just by upgrading it. Glitches. They are rare, but they do happen in this game, which is why they instilled a very handy feature of saving the game as often as you'd like at your motorcycle. All you have to do is hold the letter R if you're on PC next to your bike or while you're on your bike. As long as you are not in danger or surrounded by enemies or have an enemy alerted, you are able to exercise this function. Save the game often. This was one of the worst glitches that I've had. It was towards the end of the game where entire sections of the ground were missing and these explosive barrels were just floating in the air. Anytime I tried to progress to get to where I needed to go in the map, I would fall to my death under the map. When this happens, just restart your game, revert to a previous save, and this issue should fix itself. Selecting multiple missions at once. If you are in a camp and there are multiple people that you can speak to to get more than one mission activated at the same time, do it. You're already out in the field. You have an ammo saddle on your bike. You can go out of base, go to the mission, and then go to the next mission simultaneously. A lot of the side missions are just that. They're filler missions. They have no story content. There's no cinematic cutscenes. They are just like ambush camps, strongholds, things of that nature. You can bang these out really quick by selecting two missions at the same time so that you're not wasting time driving back to base every time you want to start a new mission. Best guns in the game, the 50 cal. The second best gun in the game is going to be the US 556. This is your all around AR 15. It is semi automatic as well as fully automatic, whatever the situation uh, is needed. That sniper rifle I was telling you about, that sniper rifle is called the 50 BFG. If you zoom in and out with your scroll wheel, and it's 50 cal, just does a lot of power. If you have a lot of zombies coming at you, you can collateral a lot of these zombies. And then the last is your sidearm, which is the sheriff. I found that this is way more effective because of the damage of the shots, the accuracy of the pistol. You can get this circle pretty small and you can, at, you can aim pretty accurately on any target that you're trying to hit. It only has six shots, but you should be uh, very surgical with your sidearm. Your, your sidearm is not meant to be a weapon that you're going to produce accuracy through volume. Your sidearm is something that you're you're just going to use when you don't want to use your AR yet or your AR is empty and you're just trying to pick off one or two people. Make sure you follow this absolute giga chad. A lot of people don't know this, but Deacon St. John in the game is played and voice acted by none other than Sam Whitwer. Do you get guidance from your... Uh... Oh, I can't. No. no. Dude. Ah. He's Way to handle like it. Said, Way to handle that animal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you filthy animal. Yeah. As you can see from some of his streams, it's literally him. And he looks exactly like in the game. They just took a real world Giga Chad and modeled the game after him. How cool is that? And last but not least, enjoy the game. This story is one of the best stories I have ever experienced in a campaign game. This game has quickly become one of my favorite games of all time. Do not skip the cutscenes. Immerse yourself in the story. This game is incredible. Enjoy every second of it. Don't rush the game. Do all of the side quests and side missions and really, really pay attention to the story. 
It's very, very well written. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Thanks. Have a great day. You can jump from really high places as long as you angle your bike the correct way down the mountain. You want the cant of your bike. Okay, not that high. <laughs>